Hey guys, my name's Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're in the late model Super Duty Ford truck, uh, 2011 plus. Uh, this looks very familiar to most of you. This is just your basic CD player brick style radio. Today what I want to show you guys is how easy it can be to upgrade from the standard CD player radio all the way up to the premium Ford navigation radio. The installation is just requires replacing the head unit here. You can replace a few other little parts, uh, add an amplifier, plug and play, and you'll be up and rolling. What we do here at infotema.com is we'll send you a pre-programmed Ford navigation radio that we'll install on this exact slot here. The tools you'll need is just a seven millimeter socket, a dash pry tool, flathead screwdriver, and that's about it. So let's shut the truck off here. Let me show you guys how to remove this dash bezel here, this radio bezel. First thing we're gonna wanna do is remove these two cubbies down here. This uh, here has the sink, and this here is your 12 volt uh, power connector here. So like I said, you could use a pry tool or a flathead screwdriver. And this will just pop out. Pushing the tab. To remove the connector. And set that aside. We'll do the same thing on this side. Pop that out. Push in the tab. And remove these connectors. And set that aside. You'll now notice a 7 millimeter screw here. And a 7 millimeter screw there. We want to remove those. Now what we'll do is we'll remove this whole fascia bezel by just pu pulling it out. It's just held in with retaining clips, so you don't need to worry about breaking anything. Now you'll notice a series of connectors plugged in behind uh, the bezel here. So what you're going to want to do is just go behind and slowly start removing the connectors. The one connector that's kind of tricky is the one here that's plugged into your climate control. You're going to want to press down on the tab here and slide this lever back and that will lift it out. Now that the bezel is removed, we're going to want to remove the four 7mm screws that hold in the radio. The radio will just slide out. You can then remove the connectors that are in the back of the radio and set the radio aside. Now that the radio is removed, we're going to want to open up the brick kit that we send you. This is the insulation kit that comes with the radio. We'll take out the parts here. The first part we're going to want to install is the antenna splitter. That's this part right here. Basically what we're going to want to do is plug the Sirius antenna, which is this yellow or curry colored FACRA connector, into here. And then these two connectors will plug in the back of the radio. This will allow the GPS to receive a signal through the satellite radio antenna. Next, we're going to remove your right-hand steering wheel control switch and replace it. Basically, it looks identical. The phone button will be just a little bit different. When you upgrade to the Ford Navigation Radio, the switches are just a little bit different from the factory. That's why we're going to replace it.
pop it back into place. The next step, what we're going to want to do is install the plug and play amplifier kit. Now this Ford navigation radio, if you were to just plug it in now, you would hardly hear any volume. That's why these uh, navigation radios run off of a factory amp. So we have these kits custom made. So it's plug and play. There's no wire splicing or anything like that. And what you want to do is plug one end of the amp using these two connectors. And then behind the radio, you're going to want to plug your factory radio connector into the female port. And then the male port will just be a pass-through. This will plug in the back of the navigation radio. Now, a lot of customers ask us where they need to install the amplifier. You could really install it anywhere. A lot of times people install it just behind the knee bolster here in the steering column. You can install it underneath the seat. Uh, there's really no right or wrong location to install the amplifier. So in this particular situation, um, I'm going to install it behind the knee bolster just using a few zip ties. Now that I have the amp buttoned up and zip tied into place up behind the uh, knee bolster here, um, the next step what we're going to want to do is we want, we're going to want to figure out if sync or the voice recognition feature that you currently have uh, hears your voice. If it doesn't hear your voice, you just have to install one more cable which will route through here uh, to the right A pillar there and it will pin out and plug into your sync module. So let's go ahead and install the navigation radio and let's test the sync feature. You're going to want to pull, plug your pink connector into here. Your yellow satellite radio antenna into there. AM FM antenna. You'll notice the holes will match up perfectly. But let's go ahead and fire up the truck and see if the sync feature will hear our voice. You'll notice you get the built Ford Tough splash screen here. It's pre programmed to a Ford. Now that you installed the amplifier, you also notice uh, quite a bit of difference in the volume or the, the uh, sound in the vehicle. Now I'm going to press the voice recognition button to see if Sync can hear our voice. Please say a command. Audio. Sorry, please say a command or say help. Since Sync didn't hear our voice, we're going to have to go in, go ahead and install this cable here. And as I mentioned, it'll run from the back of the radio to the right A pillar. We're going to pin out these two little pins here into the Sync module connector. So let's shut the vehicle off. Slide our radio back out. Move our radio. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install this cable here. This is basically how it looks. You have a female and a male which will plug in the back of the radio. 
it'll route to your sync module connector and the red will be pinned into 12 and the blue wire will be pinned into 13. And the Super Duty truck, as I mentioned, it's going to be right back here on the right A pillar. So let's pop off this panel here. You'll notice the sync module is right here with this little white sticker on it. Now to better access the connector, you can also get down below the glove box here and remove the two push pins. And we'll slide this out. That'll give us better access to the sync module connector. Like the climate control connector, you're going to want to push in the tab and slide the gray lever up and out to remove the connector. Just for this demonstration video, I went ahead and disconnected the sync uh, module connector. As I mentioned, if you push down this black tab here, the gray tab will, will slide over and it will pull out of the uh, module. Now what we're going to want to do is um, remove this black housing here by pushing out these two little um, pins here. and it will slide out of the housing. We can then locate our number 12 and 13 pins. You'll notice one through 18 on one side, and if you look closely, 37 through 54 on the other side. So let's find 12 and 13. Now what we're gonna wanna do is slide the red into 12, and the blue into 13. It can only go in one way. So you'll hear it click into place once it's inserted. We can now then take our shield and slide it over. You'll hear it click into place. Now what we'll do is we'll feed this through the dash up to behind the radio and simply just plug it in. I'll now pull the slack through and zip tie it behind the radio. Now that the XP2 harness is run, we can go ahead and plug the male into the female connector and plug it to the back of the radio. We can now replace our 7 millimeter screws. Now that the radio is back into place, we can install the bezel. You can then pop the bezel into place. You notice it has the factory fit and finish around the radio. 
we can now reinstall our two seven millimeter screws. Now that everything's buttoned up and back into place, let's fire it up and try it out. When we first installed the radio, the sink wasn't working. That's why we had to install that XP2 harness. Um, so I'll demonstrate now. Please say a command. Audio. Audio. Please say a command. Radio. Radio, please say a command. 101.9. Radio, FM 101.9. You'll notice that feature now works perfectly, and that will also work perfectly with your Bluetooth phone as well, including streaming audio. As you saw before, uh, it does have the uh, factory fit and finish it looks amazing quite a bit different than your original radio within your radio tab you'll have your choice between AM FM and satellite radio satellite radio obviously requires a subscription your media feature or uh, hard key here will control your built-in CD CD and DVD player you'll have a jukebox where you can load CDs onto the internal hard drive and store sometimes up to 500 CDs on the system and be able to play all your favorite CDs through the jukebox feature. The user device will be your sync um, interface here. You can adjust your, your sound, your bass and treble, balance and fade. Um, your speed compensated volume, um, this will be depending on the loud engine noise, you can have it compensate for the sound that the vehicle is putting off your DSP and your visualizer. Within the menu, you can uh, adjust your display. Most of the time you want to keep it on auto for the contrast, clock, feedback, system settings, voice control. One of the biggest reasons why we're doing the upgrade is for GPS navigation. So you'll notice the GPS navigation map. Destination. It has all the, all the traditional features a, a nav system would have where you can um, look you know, by putting your favorite destinations in, your standard route by putting addresses in your, your address book or looking up through in a street address or point of interest. You'll be able to edit your route through the edit route soft key. You also can set all your preferences through this navigation hard key route preferences, maps, if you want it in 2D, 3D maps, heading north, um, all sorts of different preference here you can fool around with once you get it installed. Sirius Travel Link is a great feature that you can get. Um, it's additional subscription through Sirius Satellite Radio where it will give you sports scores, weather reports, um, local fuel prices and the navigation will direct you right to those places you'll be able to connect your phone if you don't if you don't already have one connected through the phone hard key here and then you could do uh, you could set that all up through here as well Here at infotainment.com, we do all sorts of upgrades, not just for the Ford Super Duty, but also a lot of other vehicles as well, all your American-made vehicles. Um, in addition to navigation or um, infotainment upgrades, we also do cameras. Uh, we could do front cameras, backup cameras. Backup cameras is obviously very popular with the Super Duty trucks. We sell a lot of them. It's all plug and play with the system. Um, side view cameras. Uh, we can mirror your smartphone onto the display so you can watch movies. Uh, this does have a built-in DVD player so you can watch DVD in motion with some of our kits. 
So come seek us out, infotainment.com. Not only could we get you set up with this awesome navigation system, but also a lot of other extras included. Thanks for watching, guys.